okay? Okay, so today's topic is perfectly competitive labor markets. Okay, so we'll study two kinds of labor markets, perfectly competitive labor markets, and the next time we'll study labor markets where the firm has some market power and can reduce the price or excuse me, reduce the wage of workers and call that a monopsony. But today we're looking at perfectly competitive labor market. Okay, so in the labor market, uh, we have um, on the vertical axis the price of labor, which is the wage, or the wage rate. Okay, on the horizontal axis, uh, there's the quantity of labor. Make sure that when you label this, you label it wage or wage rate. You don't label it price. Okay, we won't accept that. Okay, so make sure that's labeled wage. Uh, what we're starting to see a little bit with some of you guys is you're just starting to put the price on the vertical no matter what the market to hedge your bets, right? Um, uh, so to speak. Um, there's a lot of that going on today. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so in any case, uh, please label it correctly with, as, as the wage rate. Okay, uh, so the wage is established in the market. Okay, so say like you're talking about um, workers in the, uh, in the agricultural industry on farms, like farmhands. Okay, uh, you know, if you, if you go to uh, sort of, um, you know, to any sort of American, you know, a lot of American uh, farm areas or even in America, some American cities, um, if you, you know, you'll, you can see migrant laborers and so forth and so on who will just wait for someone to come around the pickup truck and pick them up, you know, on any given day and say, okay, this is what we're paying. How many, how many of you guys want to work today? And they jump in the truck and they go, okay? So that, that wage is set in the market, right? The farmer doesn't set it, um, and the farm hands don't set it. It's set by the forces of supply and demand in the market. There are so many businesses out there competing for labor that they, um, they essentially, every business has to accept the market wage, and there are so many workers looking for work, okay, that they essentially have to accept um, the wage that's established in the market. And so we would say businesses over here are wage takers, okay? So like businesses in the perfectly competitive product market are price takers. Businesses in the perfectly competitive labor market are wage takers, okay? And so no matter how many workers they hire, they have to pay those workers the market wage. And so this here is the supply curve, okay? This horizontal curve here is the supply curve for the firm, okay? No matter how many workers it hires, you have to pay those workers that wage, okay? The, um, the term for, for supply in the, in, in, the, uh, in the labor market, excuse me, for the firm, we refer to it as the marginal resource cost, or MRC. So just labeling that supply is not enough. You want to label S equals MRC. In some books, okay? In some books, you'll see it labeled MFC, okay, which is marginal factor cost. They mean the same thing. Okay, so marginal resource cost and marginal factor cost mean the same thing. Okay? Um, okay, the demand for labor is downward sloping for the firm. We refer to it as the marginal revenue product or MRP. Make sure you label it D equals MRP. You don't have to put this, I put this here so you understand that marginal product at any given amount of output is equal to the marginal product of labor at that, not output, I'm sorry, at that quantity of labor times the price of the good. Remember, in a perfectly competitive market, the price of the good is going to be constant. No matter how much output this business makes, this will, re will be a constant. Okay? Now, in We'll stop there. But for any firm, no matter what kind of market they're working in, increasing amounts of labor results in a decreasing marginal product. As you increase labor, marginal product decreases. Thus, this curve decreases. Since this remains constant, and this is decreasing as you move to the right along the horizontal axis. Now, in an imperfect, this were a business uh, competing in an imperfectly competitive uh, market like an oligopolistic or a monopolistically competitive market, um, then 
price would also be reducing as you hire more workers, right? Because as you hire more workers, you get more output. And when you get more output in an imperfectly competitive market with a downward sloping demand curve, the price will be reducing, right? So in that case, in an imper imperfectly competitive situation, um, both will be reducing and this curve would be steeper. It would reduce at a faster rate. Okay, so that's something you should know. Okay, be able to compare the two if you're asked that. Okay, and then again, you have wage on the vertical, quantity of labor on the horizontal, and that's the equilibrium quantity for the firm. Okay, so those are, that's, that, that, that's, that's a perfectly competitive labor market. Make sure you're able to understand and do that on a test. Okay, that's it.